Hello, we are at the London Stock Exchange studios for another broadcast interview with Business Worldwide magazine. Now, the problem of how to resolve global conflict is never far from the news. It's an issue that affects the economy, society and culture across the globe. But can business people who rely on open markets and tolerance play a more proactive role in ending disputes? Well, Mohamed al CEO of Alia Global Group and winner of Business Worldwide magazine's Man of the Year 2017, thinks that they can. Now, I'm delighted to be joined by Mohammed, and he's acted as a mediator in several regional conflicts. Now, we'll be talking about why doing business is central to the economy of peace. And that's a big subject. It's going to be fascinating to talk to you. So I'm going to dive right in with my first question, if I may. Uh, now, your company, Alia Global Group, you have acted as a mediator in conflicts in West Asia. Uh, in the West, we call that the Middle East. So how did you have the idea to do that? Actually, it's come by accident. Uh, we have a large network globally and we've got some inquiries from some of the government and the private sector uh, parties to buy service or product from other uh, region that they are banned to speak to for political reasons. So they hire us or they ask us to open a dialogue with the other party just like to start doing business uh, to fulfill their inquiry and that's the way it started. Uh, it's become by accident in the beginning as I, as I mentioned to you but then it's become like as part of our business. So it's all about communication in terms of mediation. Is there one factor, do you think, that has led to your success in this role? Definitely. I think my personal capability to make the other party feel comfortable, relaxed, and uh, confidentiality is a very important part of our business to act as a, med as a mediator. So these three elements uh, really help me to succeed in our, in our job as a mediator. Because we were speaking about this, that communication is so key. Yeah. Being social, do you think that's how it's worked? Definitely. For us, we really follow, uh, we follow like the old uh, business norm uh, style. Like for me, I believe in face-to-face -face meeting more than communicating by email or phone calls or Skype. When you shake hand, when you see the person, you see like his personal interaction uh, with you in real life. Uh, not through a video call, that will give you a level of comfort and level of comfort is the start of doing any business. Do you think that that communication came from your background? Your company is a family background in origin. Do you think that that has helped you in terms of communication? Definitely. Uh, my family, they moved from Saudi Arabia to Kuwait on the 17th century before the formation of the state of Kuwait. Uh, up to now, like if you go to the old bazaar, to the old souk, it's still under my family name. Uh, we are very active in the trading and the real estate business and that's the source of our wealth. Uh, for me, uh, most of my family members, they are in the diplomatic sector and that gives us, like, in our, it's in our genes, that put it that way, to communicate, to, to negotiate. So that really helped me in doing, being as a mediator. And that reputation, do you think, helped? Do you think a reputation is incredibly important? Definitely, and I got that for granted. It's a privilege to have this family name. Uh, that helped me a lot like in doing business and give the trust of, other, of the other party. Why do you think, then, there is so much conflict? If, if we're talking about communication, yeah. it seems as though it's easy enough you get somebody like yourself, a businessman, to talk and be a mediator between two parties. Why, then, do you think there is so much conflict? It's a big question, but why do you think there's so much conflict in the Middle East? Uh, because people who are in power, they have their own head and agenda. And if you are having your own head and agenda and not thinking about your society, your nation, you will always have a conflict. Uh, you will have a lot of, uh, always like a political tens t tension. If you put your, your nation, your society at, uh, at first, this uh, will, not, will never happen. Do you really think that business can help in these kinds of situations where governments are, are having trouble sorting them out? For sure, because money at the end of the day, making money, it's like uh, the desire of everyone. And for the other party fulfilling their uh, demand for products and services which would give them a better life okay it's uh, it's also like in, in their and their agenda so it would be a balance so for sure like doing business for sure it will ease uh, the relationship between the two conflicted parties and make them both happy so in a way business can lead to peace do you think definitely if we are really having clear agenda and uh, we have the objective to make only business without uh, personal intention, that for sure it will, make, it will create peace. Let me give you an example. Uh, the nuclear agreement between Iran and the six countries, uh, 
why why it happened because at the end of the day they want to do business the Iranian they want to do business with the outside world and like the the six countries six major six major countries they want to, to have peace in the region you you use an example there is yeah. there any example where you've used your mediation skills that you could talk about naming no names of course for sure uh, for me like uh, last year i did like a very big project which i am very proud of it i have established a financial structure between two conflicted parties that they have one of one, one of the parties they have debt toward the other the other party when i say parties i mean a government of a country so i have established a, a platform that the country who has the, uh, debt uh, to reinvest their income the, uh, their, their annual income into like investment that and the return of the investment that will pay their debt and the at the same time it will pay the government salary which was always in delay because of uh, lack of, of liquidity now we were discussing the fact that we, we can't talk about specific yeah. examples and that just highlights how you've been working in the areas of the world where they're the most tense business deals that you could possibly imagine. Um, so you have experience there. You've learned lessons, I suppose, that people around the world could learn from. What lessons do you think that you could perhaps uh, give people to learn from? For me, I have like two lessons. The first lesson is to only always to look from the horizon, from the top to any situation, and try to simplify it, simplify it into factors. Uh, when you simplify things into factors and then to solve each one separately, you will succeed. But if you look at it from like inside the, inside the box, it will be a big mess and you will not reach anything. That's the first lesson. The second lesson that I learned from working as a mediator that we are all human and we are all equals and we don't we have to live without with no boundaries in this world well i think people could put those lessons into ordinary life i know i could uh, just before we let you go uh, in terms of west asia the middle east um, is mediation do you think in terms of business is is that going to help the the, the way that we look at conflict in that region do you think for sure, if you bring two conflicted parties to, to, one, to, to one table to meet and to greet and to shake hands and try to talk about different things, then this relationship will be converted from a business relationship to a personal relationship. And that will make things easy and more relaxed. And then people will just like to give them a head up that we can live in peace if we just solve our small issues. What about the future then? Big question, but what do you have yeah, coming up? For the future, for us, like we really, we, as a company, we really want to dedicate more time to work as a mediation because I think it's that's our social responsibility. We have the chance to do so. We have the network. We have all the capability to do it. So we really want to invest more time in that. It's not about money. As, as, I, as I mentioned, it's, it's more about social responsibility to see people live, live in peace and have a comfortable life. And is there anything that you can tell us as we say, it's very sensitive in terms of actual examples, but is there anything anywhere in the future that you're going or anything that you're, you can tell us? I think, yeah, for me, I can mention just one thing. I would be really busy in the Middle East, which where all the tension nowadays it is, because uh, there are a lot of assignments there. Uh, I got a lot of projects. I need to fulfill them. So, yeah, we really need to invest like, a lot of time there. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for being here today. It has been fascinating to talk to you. And congratulations, you are Business Worldwide Magazine's Man of the Year 2017. Congratulations. Thank you, Louisa. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Mohammed Aldawaj, this is the moment that you have been waiting for because you actually get to receive your award. You get your hands on this. You are Business Worldwide Magazine's Man of the Year 2017. Wholly deserved. Congratulations to you. Here you are. Thank you, and I hope that motivates others to work in our field to just breed peace all over the world. I'm sure that it will. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you.